This is your time. The time where you take risk. You take chances. Push everything aside that's telling you no. You have the possibility to shape your identity, to construct and build your life into the power you can achieve. Nothing here is stopping your progress except yourself. You're the only thing that's holding you back. If you want to become successful in life, number one, you got to change your mindset. He said, you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. Develop your communication skills because once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. I believe that all of us are born unique, but most of us die copies. You gotta find out what is it that turns you on, what resonates with you. Uh, one of the things that I realized and what allowed me to become successful as a speaker, uh, the speaking industry has been hijacked by people who speak to sell, and it's, it's okay to do that and make money. I speak to change lives because somebody spoke and change my life. So this is my passion. This is my drive. This is something that I feel in my heart. And, and so the key to that hunger-driven life is a heart-centered life. I didn't do what I'm doing for years because of my programming, because of the culture in which I was raised in. I would see other people with, with degrees and PhDs and and MBAs and credentials I don't have, and I convinced myself I couldn't do it. But Mr. Washington, on that day, we became friends, and, and he taught me not only someone's opinion of you does, does not have to determine your reality, he said that you have to work on yourself, and you have to have an unstoppable attitude, and no excuse is acceptable, and you've got to to make it a, a, a priority, a non-negotiable in your life and hold a, a constant vision of what it is you want to achieve. See it accomplished and go all out. Find a way to win in spite of the setbacks, in spite of the disappointments, in spite of your failures. I, I tell people when I'm giving presentations, you will fail your way to success. I have a saying is life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. Never let a situation or circumstance define your life, no matter what it may be. And understanding that you got something inside of you that's greater than a situation or a circumstance, but you have to constantly believe it and not only believe it, you have to make decisions and choices every single day that put you a step forward toward what you believe it.
to, to do. I mean, we, when we leave our homes in the morning, we're bombarded with over 6,000 advertising hits through Facebook, through Twitter, through Instagram, through television, through our phones and through our communities uh, and through the computers. And so all of these things are impacting us every day. So if you don't have a program for your mind, then your mind is going to be programming. You'll find yourself doing things that you did not know and, and that they affected you, that they, through marketing techniques and strategies, that they will create a thirst within you. You've got to have someone that can see something in you that you can't see, that, that, that can take you to a place within yourself that you can't go by yourself. Stop overthinking everything so much. Realize that while you are trying to do a lot of things in your life at once and you are uh, trying to be better than you were yesterday, also realize you don't have to try to do anything. You just have to do and you just have to be. And you have to understand the concept of you're not actually really doing anything, you're being done. Each and every day is an opportunity to get something from the day rather than just going through the day. But there are a lot of things that we can't always control. We can't always control the temperature outside. We can't always control what the birds are doing or what the fish are doing or what the animals are doing. But we can control what we're doing. We can control who we're hanging out with. So in a sense, we can get some control over the anxiety that we have. And the way that we're gonna gain control over those things is to think about some of the hurdles that we may have, some of the things that are blocking us from making quick, uh, quick action. The reason that um, I think belief is important is because like when you're young or when you do something and you're a novice, right? And you start out doing it and you might think you can do something with it or you might not. You might do it and it's being driven by your passion. And then somebody comes along that's a little bit older or even more experienced and they can see it in a way that you can't see it, right? And so I think it's important with belief because if a person believes in you in a way that you don't believe in yourself, you can rent that person's belief until you get strong enough to possess your own, right? And you use that person's belief to fuel you every single day, right? Because you can have a level of belief with what you're doing, but you can go back to a certain set of circumstances that tell you, nah, it's not going to happen. And so you rent that person's belief until you get strong enough to possess your own. Life is an adventure and it's going to be a challenge and get ready to, because you're going to fail your way to success. You're going to get slapped around by life. And don't spend time complaining about it and telling everybody 80% don't care and 20% glad it's you. I think the number one thing that keeps people from being successful is their fear. A whole bunch of different forms, you know. Um, Sometimes it's about the people around you and how they'll perceive you, you know, because, you know, maybe you grew up in a household where, you know, things weren't accepted or, you know, maybe your parents didn't accomplish things and then they put that kind of insecurity on you. These are the things that I feel like sometimes uh, it, it prevents people from being who they want to be because all it takes is somebody wanting to take a step, you know, and there are certain things that a lot of people in this world are sitting there thinking in their minds and they're just not going to do. Like, I used to always try to pull a lot of people and be like, you what, you can do this, you can do this. But the people that hear that motivation over and over again, sometimes they take that step. Some people just have it in them. Early, it just starts. And they just get in the muscle memory of just doing things. There's so many things in our lives that we were scared about, but we're still here. We made it past all these things. And if you fail, so what? You know, you start over, you do it again. But most people, that, that fear of failure is the thing that I think prevents them from like really, really being successful. And then also, it's like a lot of other things that are just difficult to do. You know, when you tell people the answer to success, it's a lot of hard stuff. Let your success fill itself around you. Let it construct around you. You got to work hard, right? Nobody wants to hear that. Everybody wants a shortcut, you know? Some people understand that. They like, they appreciate the progress, you know? If you tell people right now, hey, if you want to lose this many pounds, this is what you got to do. There's no short solution, but every time, there's still people out there selling whatever herbal life treatment or whatever to try to get you the quick, short route because people believe that, you know what, I'm going to do it the easy way. And 
There is no easy way. Mm -hmm. So when I tell people that, it's very blunt, it's very straight to it. You have to want to do it. But the, the best way I try to explain it is like, you know, when you're chiseling on a rock, you know, you can chisel for a long time. And you can chisel a hundred times, 200 times, 300 times, and it won't break. And then when you get to 5,000 times, it finally breaks. But all the work that you did is what made it break. It's not like you just, the last one just broke it. You know what I mean? It, it takes that, but sometimes people don't want to start that journey. You know, they don't want to get on the mission of like, you know, becoming the best that they can be. Move away from your past and move toward a new purpose. A purpose that gives you the success you've always wanted. The success that leads you to a future you deserve. Bring your life into the direction you want. The direction to change your perception, your perspective. This is the power you've earned. Don't let yourself be taken by one more mistake. Don't let yourself slip from one more wasted opportunity. Have the confidence to take action. Have the confidence to appreciate the decisions you make. To make every choice with the purpose. With the purpose to change, to improve. As a collective, a society, we all want similar. Things. We all want to succeed, to improve, to be better people. We all slip, but that's how life functions. That's the only way for us to learn. You can be more. You can have more. I feel like we spend way more time in our own minds than we do talking to other people. Like, you really spend a lot of time trying to figure it out. There's all these thoughts that come to you, whether it's like, you know, things around you, people talking to you, people close to you, uh, things you see, TV, whatever. And you're, you're, you're bringing in all these different things, trying to figure out your path in life, you know? So I think it starts with having some like real uh, understanding of what your strengths are. It's, it's about being honest. You know, a lot of people just aren't honest with themselves. You, you're telling yourself this thing, but you, you like, there's so many people that say, oh, I'm going to be an entrepreneur, I'm going to do this. And, and if you really dive down into deep, they don't really believe it, you know? And it's, that's okay. You can unlock that, but you have to figure out how to unlock it. There's a conscience that's sitting right here telling you this thing, and you try to brush it off. You have to be very honest with yourself. And then if you're not, that doesn't mean you can't succeed. It means that now you're very honest and knowing you're not as good, then you can work on getting good. But if you think you're already good at it, you don't work on it. So I spent a lot of time just reflecting on like, man, what am I good at? Like I used to think like I'm going to the NBA, you know, I was unrealistic about it. You know, you start to see people that are way bigger, way faster. And you're not telling yourself the truth. You're just like, no, nah, I'm going to the NBA. You start with doing what you're passionate about, right? Because there are a lot of people that are going through life right now trying to figure it out. Like, man, I don't know what I want to be. I don't know. Like, I was at that moment. It's not about money. I want to make it very clear. The money will come if you focus on passion, you focus on information and relationship. And I'm going to stand on the top of the mountain and sing that all day. And hopefully it has a real impact on people's lives. And I'm going to feel good about that. I'm not going to feel good if I go to the grave as being the only person with the information and the money and I just had all this money. I'm going to feel good if I'm able to impact a lot of people and that, that don't have access to this information and a good life, a quality life, and they have one. That, that's awesome. That makes me feel real good. I think the true measure of wealth is, uh, is happiness, right? Like, I really do. And it's not saying that I'm against money. I'm not against that at all. Because you gotta you gotta work hard, make your money to take care of your family, and be able to bless people. But I think it's a lot of people with so-called wealth, and they don't have joy and they don't have happiness, right? And I feel like joy, happiness is peace, and peace is the most important things we can possess, right? And for most people, their material possessions they feel are the most important. For me, when you got joy, when you got peace, when you got happiness, I think that's true wealth because you can't put a price on that. Having a purpose is that thing that that makes us tick, that gets us up every day and gets us over the hump of opposition and adversity. And the reason that I champion adversity and opposition is because I think for the most part in life, people pretty much know what to do when things go right, right? Like when things go right, they know how to feel, they know how to act, how to react. But it's when that opposition and that adversity comes and it creates a level of misunderstanding, right? Now the vision is blurred. Now you don't have clarity about what you're supposed to do. Now you question if your existence matters. 
And I think when you have a purpose, it's powerful because in the midst of the opposition, it makes you realize that you've been put here for a certain reason. You can be great, but you're living on reserve, right? You didn't, you didn't empty the bucket, right? You didn't give everything you had to every aspect of your life. Like for most people, they're great professionally, but they end up becoming a public success and behind closed doors, they're private failure. Not because they don't have the talent or the skill set, they don't have the character, right? That they can apply it and be consistent in every aspect of their life and empty out everything they got to everything, right? Now, one would say, okay, well, when do you tone it back, right? You find pockets to turn it back, right? Of course, you don't just give everything you got all the time, right? You get to a point where you learn to be efficient and effective in every aspect of your life. And for most people, it's not a problem of skill set. It's a problem of character. And empty the bucket is having the right character to be consistent and empty out everything you've got in every aspect of your life. Either somebody is in the midst of adversity or just came out of adversity or it won't be long before they head into adversity. So you need to be prepared either way. And so we all go through adversity, opposition. I think that's the thing that, that makes us all in common as people, right? No matter if you're from London, Atlanta, Florida, California, New York, like we're all going to go through something at some point or phase in our life, right? And as cliche as it sounds, when a quote says, it's never about what happens to you, it's about how you respond to it. That's very true, right? But in the same sense, I think what's most important is when we go through something, what's the perspective that we have of it, right? Because for most people, when you go through something, the person's natural perspective is, okay, what did I lose, right? What happened to me? Like, I took a loss, right? People never look at it and say, okay, man, tell me what did you gain, right? Even though I know it hurt, you didn't want to go through it, but look at it in a way to where you can say, what's the lesson in this, right? What would you say life is trying to teach you from dealing with this? And so when I went through it, my perspective was, okay, what can I extract from it to apply to other areas and aspects of my life that I feel can help other people? And I firmly believe the quicker you can shift your perspective from yourself to others, when you're in the midst of adversity, the quicker you'll get through it, right? Martin Luther King has a quote that says, life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing to help other people? Now, I'm not telling you to not acknowledge your pain. I'm not saying that. I'm not telling you not to say, man, I'm going through this and it's hard. I'm not saying that. I'm saying when you go through it, look at it, step back from the picture and say, okay, I'm dealing with this. Nine out of 10 times, there's somebody else that's either dealt with it or they're going to deal with something similar to this. And if I deal with it in the right way, I can use it to add value to lives of other people. Like when we go through a situation and circumstance, it's easy to step back and think, man, I just went through this and it's just my experience. I firmly believe when we go through things, it's for us to deal with it, get over it and reach back over the hill to help another person. And a lot of times, like you said, when you're trying to work through it, you think, man, how can I help somebody? And I'm trying to get through it myself, right? And that's a great perspective, right? But when you get through it, Right? Maybe you can't help them when you're in the midst of it because you're processing it. But when you get over the hill, I think it's important and I think it's vital that you reach back over the hill and help somebody that may be going through a similar situation and you can share your values and principles with them because that experience that we go through and we deal with it's not just for us. Before the sun rises is the time of least distraction. Before the sun rises where you can build intimacy and fluency with what you want to stand for in your day. Before the sun rises, the luxury and tranquility of the early morning hours, you can do that deep inner work that will allow you to go out in the world and, and play at your best. We live in a world where a lot of people are busy being busy, but what's the point of being busy around climbing the wrong Mount Everests? And so clarity is one of the DNAs of mastery. But if you look at the greatest billionaires, if you look at the greatest producers on the planet, these people have one thing in common. They are ridiculously curious. And no matter how much money they make and no matter how much impact they have, they maintain a white belt mentality. 
one of the keys to epic performance is a relentless commitment to daily growth. As you begin your day, so you handcraft the rest of your day. And if you have consistently great days, you're going to have consistently great weeks, quarters, year, and a lifetime. We live in a world that suggests the doorway to success it swings outward. If you build the business, if you get the jet, if you get the money, if you get the cars, if you get the beautiful spouse, then you're going to be happy. What I believe, and there's a model in the 5AM Club that I think is a very disruptive model, but it's a transformational model. And it's called the Four Interior Empires. And it's not just mindset, it's mindset, heart set, health set, and soul set. But I worked on those Four Interior Empires when I was a very unhappy litigation lawyer. Like, I'd made money, I was successful, I had two law degrees, and yet I'd wake up every morning, Tom, and I'd go into the bathroom mirror and I'd look at myself and I was a completely empty person. And nothing is more expensive than losing your joy and your peace of mind. And so what I did was I started working on myself. You know, I worked on my mindset and I read all the books and I went to the courses, but that's only your psychology. And I think that's one of the missing links in our field, which is everyone's talking about mindset. But mindset is just your belief system. It's just your psychology. It's, it's very important, but that's 25% of the personal mastery equation. I believe the second piece is your heart set. And I worked on that purifying your heart. That's your emotionality, not just your psychology. You're never going to make history dominate your domain and handcraft a world-class life if you've got a great psychology, but you're carrying the pain and sadness, disappointment and trauma of the past. So I worked on my heart set, your health set. Don't die. If you want to change the world, like dead people don't change the world. What have you done today to be different? What have you done to step outside the conventions that you set for yourself? The conventions and the rules set by your past. Today, you have the power to move on. Today, you have the power to move away from your past and move towards a successful future. This is your decision, your call to make in your future. This is how your life can gain its own direction. And this is where your life can be so much more, so much better. You can make it better. You have always had the potential to take one more step, the potential to take the risks others are too scared to take because you are more and you are stronger and you have the determination and the courage to be so much more. Know how to be someone better, to look for something better, to become someone with the purpose, to constantly look for change, to always look for somewhere to improve, for somewhere to be better because this is where you begin. You own your success, so let it take control. Take control of your life and take control of your power. This is where the power is in your control. Get after it. You go out in the world every single morning. People might ridicule you because every genius is ridiculed before they're revered. People might throw stones at you, but you use them to build monuments of mastery. People might not understand you, because any disruptor is gonna be misunderstood. And even if you're an army of one, a Galileo or a Steve Jobs or a Phil Knight, you continue at all costs. But it all starts with who you are because you'll never rise any higher than what's going on within you. What terrifies you most go directly there because discomfort is simply growth in wolf's clothing. To lead, and to become a great hero, or an everyday hero. The doorway is through embracing our suffering and doing difficult things. I think pleasure has been promoted too much in our society, like no great titan of industry, no legendary cellist, no great athlete. You know, The great ones all understand that suffering is the price of greatness. So. How do we become braver? You, you, you do the difficult things that you don't feel like doing, but you don't have the payoff. You know, be crazy. The great leaders are insane. And I say that they're insane to the majority. The great ones are all misfits and they're all weird. I mean, 
The very nature of being a disruptor and a leader means you're not a follower. And if you're not a follower, then you're not buying the Kool-Aid that society sells you. If you're not a follower, you're not like this all the time looking for likes. If, if, if you're not a follower, you dress the way you want to dress. If people criticize you, yeah, they criticize all the great ones. The critics are, n are nothing more than dreamers who got scared and never got off their chairs and got back in the game. So you've got to be willing to be, to 5 a.m. Weird, who does that? Why not sleep? Leaders have to be willing not to be followers. Stop blaming others. Stop blaming people for the reasons you find yourself in now. Stop blaming your situation. Stop blaming your parents. Stop blaming the government. Stop blaming your genetic. Stop blaming your finances. Stop blaming your past. Claw yourself back into the light. Stop blaming everybody else. The only person you can truly blame is you because you are the only person who can get yourself out of it. Live life a victor, not a victim. You might even be right. You might be poor because of your parents or broken because of your relationship you were in. But what does blaming people or society do for you? It will keep you in the same hole and all you're doing is digging the hole even more. It's because your situation, where you, right now, hasn't changed. In order to go forward and to get out of the hole is growth. Instead of bringing other people down to your level, build yourself up to them. Claw yourself out of that hole and you will get to see the sun once again. Massive success is how you prove people wrong and prove yourself right. The only way you get upstream is to swim against the current. You're permanently ruining your future. You're halting your progress. Life is made not to be easy. Not one's life is ever easy. How did you ever think you were ever going to make any progress? You can make this your time. You can take control of the life you want to live. Have the authority to know what you need to change. To know how to change and then to take action. Have discipline for yourself into progress. Switch your routine. Make your life hard. Difficult situations force you to make improvements, force you to learn, to educate yourself. Prove this to yourself. Make others jealous. Make yourself jealous. Like you're gonna only be so pretty, you're only gonna be so smart. Like you, like th there's there's things that are gonna be natural, and then there's things that you can actually control. I do believe, and I don't know if I'm right or wrong. I don't, but I do believe that work ethic is a taught behavior. It's something you do have more control over. I feel like there's a.